Hey everybody and welcome back to part two of this stacking tutorial. So in part one we looked at how we get everything done right in the DSS side of things or Deep Sky Stacker. Uh, now we're going to look at the Photoshop side of things. So you may remember we had three files that we created from our last video. Uh, whilst I didn't put you through seeing them all, it was the same principle for the S2, the HA and the O3. So I have one file for each of those. And today we're going to look at how we combine those back into Photoshop to take from three grayscale images to make one RGB image that is all lined up nicely. So without further ado, let's jump into Photoshop. And my name's Matt and this is Everyday Astro. Okay, so here we have the three files that we stacked in the previous uh, video. So this is the S2, the HA and the O3. As you can see at the moment, they are just black. We have done no editing to them whatsoever. So this is in, in the same way you would do any other editing. Uh, I'm just going to run through this very, very quickly uh, and just get some editing done so that the image is good enough for us to use. Uh, you know, that's it. In the last video, these were not uh, amazingly taken images or anything along those lines. The flat frames haven't been used properly it's it's just sample data so that we can actually go through this so the key here is really though that I just want to show you how well these images line up um, so if we just go through this again with the HA all I'm doing is a number of just arc sign curves being really really aggressive with them follow that up with just pulling the, the levels down um, do one more on that too so just bring that in. So as I said, you can see from the, where I didn't use the flats properly, you can see the vignetting around the outside. We'll do a little bit of work to just get rid of that in a second as well, uh, just so that that's always a useful thing to do. So just pulling the O3 back in. Um, I don't think I'll be quite so aggressive with the, uh, that probably looks a bit better with the O3. So there you go, that just pulls that in. So this should be good enough now. So you can see there is a difference. If you look at the nebula, you can see how the nebula moves, ignoring that brilliant vignetting that we've got there. But if we look at these same stars we looked at last time, so we've got these two stars here and this one here. If you look at them between the images, when I flick through them, now the stars don't move. So while the nebula is obviously different depending on what gas was being isolated, we don't have the stars moving, which is, a key part of this. So let's just do a little bit of lens correction. Uh, if you don't use this, it is a way to kind of half cheat on your images. You can just pull the vignetting down. So this is under um, filter and lens correction. Go into the custom tab and you can pull that down. There's distortion you can use as well. I've never actually found a reason to use that, but it just means that, again, if we look at this from a before and after point of view, uh, it makes a big difference to your images. So let's just do this on all of them, just so that they are roughly equal. And I just keep going until I can see the vignetting is pretty much gone. Again, I'm not trying to be perfect with this here. It's not the intention of this uh, video. So let's just do this last one. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna take that to about there. Okay, so now we have three relatively unvignetted uh, images uh, and we want to obviously combine those into a colour image. And the easiest way to do this is to either control A or uh, command A depending on whether you're using Mac or Windows and then again command or control C to copy that. So you now copied it and then you can go control or command N for new. And the top one here is it'll come up with the clipboard. So it says, well, I know what size you have selected. So I will offer to make you an image of that size again. And that's what we want to do. The only difference is over here, we don't want it to be grayscale this time. We want to change it to RGB color. So we select that and just hit create and it will give us a new uh, canvas that is exactly the same size as our existing three ones. Now, how you combine your colors is entirely up to you. 
but the traditional Hubble palette is SHO, so in that order of RGB. So for the R, we would take the S2. So select it all, copy, and go into your new image. Go into the channels tab and just select red. So then you can paste that into there. So you paste the, the sulfur into the, the red. The HA, you then again, select it all, copy it, and then you go back into that image and put that into the green channel. And then you go to the O3, you would copy that, and you put that into the blue channel. So we now have red, green, and blue made up of S2, uh, HA, and O3 in that order. And now, when we magically combine them, what we find is that our stars have actually all lined up. So there is now no issues with any of our stars. And all the colours are there, we can see it, and look at some of that, the beauty of the detail of, of this nebula never actually ceases to amaze me. So uh, yeah, I, I do think it's one of my favourite uh, uh, targets out there. I think it just looks wonderful. Um, I say it was always discs are full, so let's just uh, get rid of that, because it really isn't that much of an important data. But it's just worth seeing what we can actually try and just pull out of this. Uh, it's not great data, so you know, I'm not expecting too much out of this. That's for sure, as you can see, it starts to get um, a little nasty as we do this. But I mean, it gives you a, an example there of how we can pull some of that data out. There is every chance that if we use gradient exterminator, it might do something with that. But again, this is the key for getting good data when you're out there. It is so worth putting the time into getting good data. Uh, without it, your images just don't look as good. Um, and again, we've, we've got some vignette in there, perhaps we might be able to get rid of that as well. But um, this, yeah, I think this, this overall shows you how much easier that is as a way of combining your images uh, rather than, no, not, not going to take it out. So uh, again, importance of good data. Uh, but it just shows you how much easier it is to combine it just by selecting that reference frame and then stacking them all in the same session so it keeps using that frame means you don't have to worry about anything. All of the stars here, regardless of where I look, they are all correctly uh, lined up. Uh, and it means that I can just have a much, much easier time now of ed editing the image uh, and, and pulling some of this, this really, really pretty data out of this. So I hope you found that helpful. Uh, I hope you found some use in some of that, uh, whether it was in how to stack or with how to use lens correction to help you with some of your vignetting. Uh, say it doesn't replace good data. I, I, I normally spend a good amount of time getting that data, so don't fall into bad habits where you can, um, but this will make your life a whole lot easier when it comes to lining your images up. So that's everything for this tutorial. I, say, I hope you enjoyed it, uh, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Let's go.